welcome you all we are in digital electronics ke 039 oblique 049 we are discussing about digital logic families we will start this topic from today's lecture myself dr kishanu kundu assistant professor department of electronics and communication engineering gl bazar institute of technology and management okay so let's start we will discuss about the various type of digital logic family so a logic family is a collection of different integrated circuit chips that have similar input output and internal circuit characteristics but they perform different logic gate functions such as and or not etc okay so based on the components and devices that it internally use digital logic families are named as rtl ttl dtl ecl and cmos for the full forms RTL stands for register transistor logic, TTL stands for transistor transistor logic, DTL stands for diode transistor logic, ECL for emitter couple logic and C for complementary MOS. Okay. So, for each logic family we will discuss in the upcoming video lectures. Now, in this lecture we will discuss the characteristics of detail logic family in detail. So, uh, this is the classification chart for logic families you can see the, the digital uh, uh, ic's can be either bipolar or unipolar then bipolar can be two types saturated and unsaturated then saturated can be classified as rtl rtl dtl and dctl dctl is nothing but direct coupled transistor logic and this is also can be termed as i square l this integrated injection logic HTL and TTL. Okay. For unsaturated there are short keys TTL and emitter couple logic ECL and unipolar that be PMOS, NMOS and CMOS. So, this is the classification chart of logic families. Now, the two basic tennis whatever we have seen in the chart we are now discussing here. Technical management ICs are bipolar technology and metal oxide semiconductor MOS technology. What are the bipolar families? The bipolar families are lower circuit construct exponentially form components fabricate bipolar transistor on the chip. Okay. In the bipolar category, there are three basic families called DTL, TTL, and ECL. These are basic three categories DTL, TTL, and ECL. Okay. DTL uses diodes and transistors, TTL uses transistors also become the most popular family in small scale integrated integration and MSI medium scale integration chips and ECL is the faster logic family which is used for high speed application. So, ECL there is an advantage for ECL is it is used for high speed application right. Next MOS families. The MOS family fabricates MOS metal oxide field effect transistor. The MOS category there are three logic families namely P MOS, P channel MOSFET, N channel MOSFET and C MOS complementary MOSFET. Okay. P MOS is the oldest and slowest type, N MOS used for large scale integration field of microprocessor and memories, C MOS which uses a push pull arrangement of the N channel and P channel. MOSFET is extremely used where low power consumption is needed such as in pocket calculators. This is very very important where we need low power consumptions for that type of application CMOS are very effective. Okay. Next, in the bipolar saturated logic families the bipolar transistors are used as the main device it is used as the, at the switch and operate in the saturation and cut off regions. TTL an example of the saturated bipolar logic. This is very very important point. In the unsaturated bipolar logic, the bipolar transition is not driven into hard saturation, this increases the speed of operation. So, the unsaturated bipolar IC such as short key TTL and ECL is much faster and compared to TTL. Already we have discussed that TTL ECL is the use for high speed application, right. So, here this is the reason for high speed because this is increase the speed of operation this is not driven into the hard saturation right that is why they are having faster speed. All these ICs are fabricated on silicon chips using different fabrication technologies. Okay. 
next. Now, we will start discussing about the characteristics or parameters of a logic parameters. So, first voltage parameters, first are the voltage parameters. Ideally, the input voltage level of 0 volt and plus 5 volt for TTL are called logic 0 and logic 1 means like that this is this is 0 and this is 1. So, this is 0 volt and this is 1 is equal to plus 5 volt ok right. However, practically we will not always obtain voltage even matching exactly to these values therefore, necessary to define the worst case input voltages. So, this is the V i l max first one is V i l max this is worst case low level input voltage this is V i h min worst case high level input voltage what are they? This is the maximum value of input voltage which will be considered as a logic 0 level. If the input voltage is higher than V i l max then it will not be treated as low input level got it. Next this is the minimum value of input voltage which will be considered as logic 1 level. If the input voltage is lower than V i h min then it will be not treated as the high input level got it. So, these are two terms V i l max and V i h min. Next, this is the V 0 h min and V o l max. So, the here from the diagram itself will be clear more clear first of all we will check the definitions. What is V o h min? Worst case high level output voltage, this was the for input, these two for input ok, V i l i for input there is like this V i l this is i for input l for low then V i h i for input and h for high like that. Okay. So, this is V o h o for output h for high. So, worst case high level output voltage. So, it is definition is this is the minimum value of the output voltage which will be considered as a logic 1 level. If the output voltage is lower than V o h main then it will be not it is at high 1 output level right then is V o l max means output low worst case low level output voltage this is the maximum level of output voltage which will be considered as logic 0 level. If the input voltage is higher than V o l max then it will not be treated as low output level. So, from the diagram itself it is very clear this is for input voltages means these are V i l and V i h right and this is for output voltage V o h and V o l right. You can see this, this is the value of V i h minimum, V i l maximum, this is V o h minimum and this is V o l maximum. This is the V c c power supply right, this is logic 0 and logic 1 got it ok. Next, the voltage parameter can be shown in the detail circuit consisting of gates as shown in the below figure. This is the NAND gate and NOND gates are shown can be used of TTL, EC and CMOS of any other type. Okay. So, this is the NAND gate we are giving the two low we know that when both are low in NAND gate the output will be high and when both the inputs are high of a NAND gate will be having low voltage. Okay. So, next next parameter is fan in and fan out. So, fan is in is defined as number of inputs a gate has. For example, a 2 input gate will be having a fan in as equal to 2 ok number of inputs. Fan out is given the maximum number of inputs for the same IC family that a gate can drive without falling outside the specific output voltage limits. Higher fan out higher the current supplying capacity of a gate. For example, a fan out for 5 indicates that the gate can drive at most 5 inputs of the same IC family. This is very important. If any having any device having have fan out as 5, what it defines? It defines that the, the gate can drive at most 5 inputs of the same IC family. Okay. Next noise margin or noise immunity. What is noise margin? we all know the noise is an unwanted electrical disturbances that may cause induce some voltage in the connecting wires used between two gates or from a gate output to the load. What is noise immunity? Noise immunity is defined as the ability of a logic circuit 
to tolerate the noise without causing any unwanted changes in the output. A quantitative measure of the noise emitted is called the noise margin. These are very important from example point of view, right? They can ask you the parameters of logic families. Otherwise, they can take it some values like fan in, fan out, noise margin. Separately, they can ask you as short questions. Okay. Now, this is the <coughs> diagram for VIL and VIH mean. Uh, we'll first discuss this one and then we'll jump through the diagram. In order to avoid the effect of noise voltage, the void levels VOH mean and VIH mean are adjusted to define levels of some difference between them as shown in the above figure. This, this figure, so first of all we will discuss this thing, the difference between VOH mean and VIH mean is known as high level noise margin and the difference between VIL max and VOL max is called the low level noise margin. You can see from this diagram, you can see this diagram. Okay, B N H and B N L. These two parameters you can discuss. So, what is B N H? B N is B O H mean minus B I H mean and low level noise margin B N L is B I L max minus B O L max. Right? Got it? When a high logic output is driving a logic circuit input, any negative noise spike greater than B N H can cause the voltages to drop into the invalid range. Okay? And similarly, when a logic G, low logic output is driving a logic circuit input, any positive spike is greater than B N L can cause the voltage to go to the invalid range. Okay. So, I think it is clear. Then propagation delay or speed of operation. The output of logic does not change state instantly in response to the change in the state of the input. Right. There is a time delay between those two events, which is called the propagation delay. Thus, propagation delay is defined as a time delay between the instant of application of an input pulse and the instant of occurrence of the corresponding output pulse. You can check it from there, this is input one inverter is used, we are having output. So, input low, output is high, then output high input is low, because inverter or give, if you give low input to the inverter it gives high output, if you give high input to the inverter it gives the low output. So, but it can constantly instantly it is not changing, some delay is there. So, this thing from low to high, from high to low some reaction delays. So, this is called T p h from this is from low to high, this is from high to low right. Again this is from high to low and this is from low to high. So, this is called T P L H and this is called T P H L right. <coughs> this is for inverter same like this is for AND gate. Okay. <coughs> so, what is T P H L? Here you can see what is T P this is T P H L this one what is this? The propagation delay measured when the output makes a transition from high 1 to low 0 state. You can see here high 1 to low 0 state. right? Then what is T p l h? The propagation delay measured when the output makes a transition from low 0 to high 1 state. So, these things I think it is clear now, these two points. Okay. The values of T p h l and T p l h are not always the same. If they are not equal, then one which is higher is considered as the propagation delay time of the gate. Okay. The propagation delays are measured between the points of corresponding to 50 percent level as shown in figure. You can check it out, we have taken the 50 percent level and with respect to that we have designed that. <coughs> Ideally, the propagation delay should be 0 and practically it should be as short as possible. The values of propagation delays are used as a measure of the relative speed of the logic circuits. For example, a logic circuit with this propagation delay time of 5 nanosecond will be faster than the one with having the propagation delay of 10 nanosecond. So, propagation delay should be as low as possible. Ideally, there should be no propagation delay, but practically it the propagation delay should be as low as possible. Then is power dissipation. As a result of applied voltage and currents flowing through the logic families, some power will be dissipated. Obviously, and it will be in the form of heat, the power dissipation will be in the form of heat. 
So, the power is in milliwatts, care should be taken to reduce the power dissipation taking place in the logic ICs, you have to protect the IC against damage, because if overheating is there then IC can be damaged right. So, to remove that to uh, to reduce the loading or power supplies. Okay. Other importance of power dissipation is that the product of power dissipation and propagation time is always constant. Therefore, the reduced power dissipation may lead to an increase in propagation delay. These are two interrelated. If we reduce the power dissipation, it can increase the propagation delay. Okay. Usually, there is one only one power supply terminal and any I for any ICs is generated by VCC for TTL ICs and VDD for CMOS ICs. The power drawn when IC from an power supply is given by the formula VCC into ICC. Figure of merit. The figure of merit of a logical family is the product of power dissipation and propagation delay. Both the terms already have discussed power dissipation and propagation delay. So, the product of both these things is called figure of merit. It is called the speed power product, the speed is specified in the seconds and power is specified in watts. So, already you have taken the formula. Okay. Practically, the value of figure of merit should be as low as possible. The figure of merit is always a compromise between speed and power dissipation. That means, if we try to reduce the propagation delay, then the power dissipation will increase and vice versa. Okay. They are inversely proportional. The speed power product is used as a common means for measuring and comparing the overall performance of different ICs. Suppose an IC family has an average propagation delay of 20 nanosecond and average power dissipation of 5 milliwatt, then an product of minute will be 20 nanosecond in 5 milliwatt. So, it will be as 100 picojoules. So, figure of merit will be 100 picojoules, right. So, let us start up the next parameter that is current parameter. In current parameter, we are having again four terms I I L, I I H, I O L and I O H. As voltage parameter already we have discussed in the previous slide, so here <coughs> we are having V I L, V I H and V O H and V O L. So, similarly as far as voltage parameters, we are having the current parameters as well. <coughs> so, that we are going to discuss in I I L low level input current. It is the current that flows in the input when a low level input voltage is specified in the range as applied. Next I I H it is the high level input current. It is the current that flows into the input when a high level input voltage in the specified range is applied. Next is I O L that is low level output current. It is the current that flows from the output when the output voltage is in the specified low voltage range and specified load is applied. And I O H is high level output current, it is the current that flows from the output when the output voltage is in the specified high voltage range and specified load is applied. So, like voltage parameters these are all four current parameters I I L, I I H, I O L and I O H. Next, <coughs> if the output current flows into the output terminal, then it is called the sinking current. So, you can be asked that what is called sinking current? Sinking current is nothing but if the output current flows into the output terminal, then it is called the sinking current. And if the output current flows away from the output terminal, then it is called the sourcing current. So, there is a difference between sinking current and sourcing current. The current parameters are displayed on the logic circuit. We can check this diagram. This is the current parameters already I have told you. This is I O H and I I H. This is for I O L and I I L. Okay. So, here one NOR gate is there. We know when both inputs of a NOR gate is low, then it gives high output. Right. Again, this high output is given as input to an inverter, so it will giving as low output. Right. Similarly, here when both are high, then of a NOR gate is input are high, we are giving the output as low. Right. 
and this is again giving as a input to a inverter to give a high output. Okay. So, these are the diagrams of these four parameters already we have discussed here <coughs> I I L that is low level input current, I I S that is high level input current, I O L that is low level output current and I O S is the high level output current. Next, <coughs> here one thing you have to notice here what is the direction of flow that arrow we have to check here that the actual current direction can be opposite to those shown in the figure depending on the family. So, we are having different type of logic families like TTL, DTL, RTL, ECL, CMOS logic for different logic the direction of current will be different. So, uh, with that it can be changed. Okay. Next, next is operating temperature. So, the temperature acceptable temperature for consumer and industrial application is 0 degree to 70 degree centigrade and for military application it is minus 50 minus 55 degree to 125 degree centigrade. So, this is the operating temperature for logic family. The performance of gate will be in the specified limit over this temperature range. If the temperature goes beyond this limit, then overheating can be caused and due to that the logic family logic gates can be damaged. So, we always try to maintain this temperature band from 0 to 70 degree for industrial and consumer applications and for material application this has been between minus 55 degree to 125 degree centigrade. <coughs> this next parameter is invalid voltage levels. The operation of a logic circuit will be proper if and only if its input voltage level are kept outside the invalid voltage range. This is very very important point that means the input voltage should be either lower than V i L or higher than V i H. Already V i L and V i H all we have discussed in the previous slides. This is you can see this is V i L max and this is V i H max. Okay. So, here we are discussing that thing that <coughs> the input voltage should be either lower than V i L max or higher than V i H mean. Right. The invalid input voltage will produce an unpredictable output response therefore, it is should be avoided. So, this invalid voltage level if we work in this range then it will give inappropriate output response. So, we should avoid this when the output is overloaded there is possibility of output voltage going into an invalid range. So, when the output is overloaded. So, there is when chances the possibilities are there that output voltage is going to an invalid range. Okay. So, in this lecture video we have started with logic families. First of all we have discussed different type of logic family examples like RTL, TTL, DTL, ECL and CMOS logic. Then we have seen the classification chart there are main uh, two types are bipolar and unipolar and in answered bipolar saturated and unsaturated and unipolar is basically the CMOS and PMOS logic. Okay. Then we have discussed about the different parameters in that we have discussed about voltage parameters then we have discussed fan in and fan out we have discussed noise, noise margin noise immunity then propagation delay from after that we had got about power dissipation there is figure of merit here it is very important figure of merit is the product of propagation delay time and power dissipation. Next we have discussed about current parameters and then the operating temperature and lastly about the invalid voltage levels. So, these are the reference thank you.